What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training. And the reason why I'm recording outside, by the way, is I'm testing out the 4K settings on my camera. And the reason why I don't usually use that is because it doesn't allow me to record in 60 frames per second. And I figure most people don't actually have a 4K monitor, but I'm just testing it out. And let me know in the comment section if you actually notice a difference in quality. Anyways, the topic for this video is using milestone lifts like let's say a 405 squat, 500 pound squat, 315 bench press, using that as motivation but not letting it become a detriment to your training. So first we'll start with that, your actual, pro, or your actual workouts in your program. If you always round to the nearest milestone, it can become a really big problem. And it's more in the long run, but let's take a short term example. Let's say you're scheduled to do 220 pounds for eight reps and then the next week 230 pounds for eight reps on the bench press. So a lot of people look at that and they'll just do 225 for eight both workouts you know, because it's pretty much the same thing. But if you look at especially the projected one rep max for those sets, that's actually a 13 pound difference. And that may not sound like a lot, but if you think about it, if you increase your bench by 50 pounds over the course of a full year, then 13 pounds is three full months worth of work, of training, just for those 13 pounds, and you're equating that as basically the same thing. So clearly in the long run, decisions like that can add up. I myself need to be reminded this often, and I notice on accessory lifts a lot of times, I especially am guilty of a lot of what I'm talking about. So for example, on close grip bench, I found myself just cranking out 225 all the time, basically for years, and making no progress on it. And it wasn't until I dedicated a full training cycle to really focusing on inching that, doing 230 pounds, doing 235, and then it finally progressed. So the little things like that really add up over time. And then the more realistic you are, just the more you're gonna have fun in the sport and the more you're gonna stay injury free. And also it's pretty much become a cliche to say you should focus on building strength rather than testing it. But that's a lot easier said than done. And one of the easiest ways to break through that, in my opinion, is to use weights you've never used before. So for example, for me, uh, deadlifting with 490 pounds is way easier mentally because I'm not thinking about what I could do if I tried for max reps on this set. You know, what would I get? Would it be better than last time? Because with 500 pounds, I would be thinking that because I've done that so often. Also, I've noticed in terms of adherence, people tend to follow programs a little bit better when they do follow the specifics exactly as written. Of course, then you're not undermining the program itself. And if you do something you don't normally do, you tend to respect it more because it is a change. So you know, okay, this is me on a different program rather than this is just my normal training under the guise of a new program. My second point is a huge one and that is about goal setting. And this one, especially on social media, I see becomes a huge issue. Where we'll say an example of a four plate bench press. And let's say your bench is around 350 to 360 pounds and your goal is to hit that 405 bench, which you know is pretty much everybody's goal. But the thing is, if you're always talking about this already before you even hit 370 pounds, 375, 390, that then you're so far away from it that even, first of all, even when you do hit it, it won't even be that big of a deal probably because people already have thought that you hit it already if you're already talking about it. And then the second problem is that then you won't enjoy the PRs in between. And if you have that type of mentality, you're just not going to enjoy powerlifting that much. And I see that all the time where someone will hit a 460 pound squat and they're already talking about when you're gonna hit 500 or 500 is coming soon. When it's, you know, it's not. It's gonna take you know, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe two years. So that's what's really important is to look at your actual rate of progress over time rather than what another 45 pound plate will bump up the weight to be. For example, for me, I could have said, you know, 585 squat was right around the corner because I hit 573 pounds at Worlds. But the reality is I hit 562 pounds a full year ago in 2014 Worlds. So it took a full year to get about 11, I think maybe it was 11 and a half pounds. And even on top of that, I trained extremely hard for Worlds in 2015. I was squatting up to five days a week right before the competition to squeeze up every pound I could. So it gets to a point where it's not even just a matter of being realistic on principle, rather it's actually really relevant to my decision making in the long term. I probably wouldn't have dropped a weight class if I did think 585 was around the corner or 600 pounds was around the corner. By being realistic, it helped me drop the ego, say, you know what, I'm gonna drop the weight class, which is going to make me way more competitive, 
in the future and also have a less likelihood for getting hurt because that's also a huge part is that you see people tend to get injured the more they are trying to always round up to that milestone and then push it and letting their form break down and doing whatever they can to try to squeeze up that milestone at all costs and when it comes to the short term when you're actually getting ready for the workout where you're going for a milestone in my opinion the best way to look at this is two points is first to go for it later rather than sooner so what I mean by this is a lot of people will look at, let's say, a 10 rep max uh, projected one rep max based off a 10 rep max set. And then it'll say, you know, calculate out to 314 and think, all right, I want to hit 315 now next workout. Well, that's probably not the smartest way to go about it. And instead, what I like to do is to wait until there's really no reason why you shouldn't be able to hit it. Make it a surprise if you miss it rather than a surprise if you do hit it. So for example, let's say on the bench press, hit 305 for a triple, then go for 315. So then by the time you hit it 315, you might be able to hit 325 on that day. And then the second part is you should ask yourself, if you do miss that lift, how are you going to honestly react? If it is going to be really upsetting, if you're, you're gonna probably try it again over and over again, maybe two more times that day, and then wanna try it again the next week, well then that's when a little issue or just a blip on the screen just testing your strength becomes an actual plateau and a big mental block. And this is often a time where you start to obsess about your technique. And then maybe you're asking all these questions about technique, maybe you're asking me about it, when it really isn't about technique. You should just reset yourself, build strength across the board, get stronger on all your accessories before then approaching that weight again, rather than just trying to squeeze up every pound you can based off of you know, just little technique changes. I know I've personally been guilty of that big time, especially with my deadlift, when approaching that seven plate deadlift, I was really trying to do anything I could to possibly force it. And then you saw at Worlds, I was pulling on the smooth and you know, almost bombed out of the meat. So that brings me to my final point. If you're interested in competitive powerlifting, you need to set aside individual lift goals. You need them to be separate from your total goals. If you think about that, how uh, likely is it that you're perfectly gonna hit each individual goal exactly on the same day? It's pretty unlikely for most people and that's going to negatively impact your total if you are so connected to those individual lift goals. Because if you give yourself, let's say a 50-50 chance to make it on your third attempt, well then that's a very good chance you grind out your squat and miss it and then you're, you're not gonna go nine for nine obviously and then you're not building up your total. Great example of absolutely perfect execution of this principle is by Brett Gibbs. You see, he broke the 800 kilogram barrier, which is a huge milestone. You know, obviously just absolutely massive, a world record as an 83 kilogram lifter. And look at his third attempt on the deadlift. He's already hit over 700 pounds in training. And that was a while ago, that was before Worlds. And it looks like he could have easily hit it on that meet, but he didn't even attempt it. He made his third attempt look like an opener. And that's how it should be done because he had that goal of hitting that 800 kilogram total and he didn't do anything to compromise it. So that's it guys, make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys, peace. Man, fuck the shooting star, Biggie died, they shot a star. Who you know when West LA, bring that ruckus to M.A. Jeez. You're lifting for both of us now. Let me see what these buttons do.